Viego is in two parts, and part one is about his story as a villain. Viego was never meant to be king. He was a spoiled, romantic second prince who only ever knew privilege until his brother died and saddled him with running a kingdom he had no interest in or understanding of. He meets Isolde, a peasant seamstress girl, and falls in love in what can only be described as a perfect Cinderella romance, and Viego becomes dependent on Isolde as the only person who will treat him with a soft, romantic love his sensitive soul craves in the Machiavellian power politics of Camavor. And it's important to understand that Viego loves Isolde deeply and genuinely, but he loves her as a prince loves a servant, like a child loves a favorite toy. When Isolde dies, he loses his comforter, and so he does what he thinks kings are entitled to do, and kills and destroys and ruins the world in the single-minded, romantic pursuit of getting back what he thinks is his. What makes him a good villain is that that is often the way of it. The most terrifying villains most of us will see in our lives are not Sauron or Thanos. They are narcissistic fools with protagonist syndrome who have been invested with the power to pursue their fantasies no matter the cost to everyone else. You will never meet a Mordekaiser, but a Viego could haunt your real life. Subscribe to this channel for more reactions and hot takes, or head on over to my main channel for longer in-depth videos.